Hey, how's it going guys? It's the Merg. Let's talk about cellular metabolism and energy. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and with the help of oxygen, it converts glucose from the blood into ATP and releases carbon dioxide in a process we call cellular respiration. Inside the mitochondria are these shelf-like structures called cristae. The cristae form an assembly line for enzymes to methodically break down glucose and convert that into ATP. An interesting theory is that scientists believe that the mitochondria may have once been a separate prokaryotic entity, but was later engulfed by a larger eukaryotic organism through a process known as endocytosis. In fact, mitochondria seem to display their own independence within the cell and can even reproduce on their own as well. So how does ATP work? Well, when ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, meaning three phosphates, loses a single inorganic phosphate group, it emits heat. The release of this heat is used as energy for everything in our bodies. An ATP without one of its phosphate groups is called an ADP, also known as adenosine diphosphate, for two phosphates. But it can always regain that phosphate group and become ATP again, which makes it, in a sense, like a rechargeable battery. So how does our body create ATP? Cellular respiration happens in three pathways. The breaking down of glucose is known as glycolysis. The Latin word lysis stands for degradation. Then the pathway moves onto the citric acid cycle, and finally to the electron transport chain. Each of these pathways has its own separate way of making ATP. So during glycolysis, glucose is actually split right down the middle into two new molecules called pyruvate. This all happens in the cytoplasm and actually doesn't require any oxygen. And because it doesn't require oxygen, it is known as an anaerobic process. During glycolysis, hydrogen and electrons are taken away from the glucose. The result is a molecule called NADH and enough energy to create two ATP molecules. The pyruvate molecule created in glycolysis is then conveniently used in the pathway called the citric acid cycle, and sometimes you'll notice people refer to it as the Krebs cycle. Compared to glycolysis happening in the cytoplasm, the citric acid cycle occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. Pyruvate enters the citric acid cycle starting as what we call acetyl-CoA. The process will continue to break down acetyl-CoA, leaving behind carbon dioxide, ATP, hydrogens, and electrons. Let's briefly move on to the electron transport chain. Remember when I mentioned NADH? It's a vastly important component. It's created from both glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. It's actually a hydrogen and electron carrying molecule, and this is where it ultimately brings the electrons it's been holding onto. The electron transport chain can be described as a group of carrier proteins bound together. And like the citric acid cycle, the electron transport chain also occurs inside the mitochondria. The electrons released here eventually use up all of its energy, and at this point, the depleted electrons have just enough energy left behind to bind to its final reaction, oxygen. This creates the final product with the help of an unused hydrogen atom in NADH to create water. With the final stage of the process being oxygen, you could describe this pathway as aerobic. The final result of cellular respiration is a whopping 36 to 38 ATP molecules. Fermentation is an anaerobic process. You should consider fermentation as the lesser capable alternative to the electron transport chain, mainly because of the absence of oxygen. Fermentation occurs when there is no other way for the body to take in enough oxygen. You've got to understand how important it is for that final electron to create water from oxygen and hydrogen. Now, if you remember back about our discussion about glycolysis, it is an anaerobic process as well. But in order for glycolysis to proceed, it actually needs the pre-molecule NAD+, 
for hydrogen and electron collecting, thus becoming NADH. In fermentation, however, this same NADH passes its hydrogen and electrons to pyruvate to produce something called lactate. As you may have heard, an abundance of lactate can be damaging or even toxic to human muscles. Luckily for us, the availability of oxygen at some point converts lactate back into pyruvate. And that will be it for today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. If you'd like me to create some supplemental videos explaining a little further, I will. And like always, like, subscribe, and share. Bye.